You survived the first week. Congratulations. The second week will be devoted to the investment that the company has to undertake in order to be able to produce and sell its goods and services and try to generate a margin and a profit. This is often referred to as the capital employed by the company. In order to define it, we have to start with a standard balance sheet. As you can see on the slide, on the one side, you have the use of money by the company. The, the cash, cash and bank, the money which is used in giving credit to the customers, the account receivables, all the money involved in inventories, and the money spent in long-term asset, machine equipment, etc. On the other side, on the right-hand side, you have the source of money. Of course, equity, the shareholder's money, the owner's money. And then the financial debt, the debt on which you pay real interest, and what is called here payables, all the credit that you receive from the suppliers and some other institution like tax, custom duties, etc. This is the accounting presentation of the balance sheet. By a very simple transformation, we are going to go to the economic presentation of the balance sheet. What I'm going to do is very simple. I'm going to take one element on the right, called payables, and I'm going to put it on the left. I can do that as long as I change the sign. I'm going to take the cash, cash and bank, on the left-hand side, I'm going to put it on the right changing sign. What you get, and that's what you have in the second slide, is on the one side, net fixed asset plus something which is inventory, accountables minus payable. This is what we are going to call later the networking capital. And on the other side, you have the equity, shareholders' money, and the financial debt minus the cash, which is what we'll be calling later on the net financial debt. We'll be back to that in the next weeks, but for the moment, let's just remind that the capital employed is equal, and that's what the slide is showing now, the net fixed asset plus the net working capital. So, in this week two, we'll study first investment in fixed capital, first video, the concept of net working capital, second video, how to compute this working capital, third video, and then we'll continue to work with illustration of different companies, companies that we met in the previous videos, L'Oréal, Arcelor, and with our Grenmin case study. So this first video of week two covers the investment in fixed capital. Depending on the type of industry in which the company operates, the investment can be very large. We say capital-intensive companies, such as car companies, steel companies, etc. Or very light, service companies, knowledge industry in general. Two key issues are raised at that stage. First, understanding the age, the state, and the productivity of the fixed capital. Two, understanding the investment policy of the company and its consistency with its overall product market strategy. First issue, the age, state, and productivity of the fixed capital. In order to do so, a very simple ratio is needed. Net fixed asset divided by gross fixed asset because this ratio provides a good insight on how old or how young is the fixed capital of a company. If you find a, a company with a high ratio, for example, equal to 90%, it means that the investments are very new, very young, as depreciation is low compared to the total gross value of the fixed assets. The consequences are 
on the positive side, that there will be no need of new investment in the near future, in the next few years, apart from those required by the fast growth in sales. On the slightly negative side, because these assets are very new, the company may face some set of time and need some adaptation period for the new equipment. On the contrary, if you find a company with a low ratio like uh, 20%, it means that you have some crucial question there. First, there is uh, potentially high production cost linked with the fact that the equipments are old and therefore a loss of uh, competitiveness vis-à-vis -vis the competitors. Secondly, we have the question of uh, short-term financing problems that the company will face to renew in the next few years this old fixed capital. Another simple ratio to assess the efficiency of the fixed capital is a so-called fixed asset turnover. What is that? It is simply equal to revenues divided by net fixed assets. In other words, how much revenue the company generates per dollar of net fixed assets. More than the number itself, which uh, is sometimes not very meaningful, what is important is a trend through time and, and the comparison with peer companies, if you can find some. Let's now see the second important issue we have with fixed capital, the company investment policy and its consistency with its overall growth strategy. One easy way of looking at this issue is to compare the amount of depreciation of the period to the level of capital expenditure in the same period. In other words, the ratio is capital expenditure, capex, as we'll be saying very often, the amount of money you spend in investment, long-term investment, divided by depreciation. If this ratio is one or close to one, it means that my investment level is roughly equal to my depreciation. In other words, I maintain my equipment by replacing the old machines by new ones, but I have no plan to grow. If the ratio is higher than one, for example two, it means that my investment level is equal to twice my depreciation allowances and that I have an objective of growing fast. Finally, if the ratio is less than one, for example 0.7, I'm in a pure logic of reduction of my activity as my investment just represents 70% of my depreciation. Let's take an example using two companies that uh, we have considered in week one to illustrate this point. L'Oréal, the cosmetics company which remember as a growth essentially in volume of 10% between 2011 and 2012. L'Oréal need to invest rather heavily to feed that growth in emerging markets. And you can see that the ratio capital expenditure over depreciation is higher than one. On the average, if you take the average column over the period, 862 capex divided by depreciation, 754 is equal to 1.14. ArcelorMittal, the steel industry company, is in a very cyclical business, with sales declining by 10%, and obviously some overcapacity, and absolutely no need to undertake new investment. With an average level of capital expenditure of 3,877 million, and an average yearly depreciation of 4,571,000,000, you see that the ratio is equal to 0.85, well below 1. If we now apply these measures to Gremlin, our fast-growing company in the video game business, you see that the ratio is well above 1, almost 2 in 1996, more than 3 in 1997, and more than 2 again in 1998. The second type of investment that the company needs to do is the change in net working capital. And we are going to review it in the next three videos. So, see you in a few moments on the second video of our week two.